I'm here with the HTP Invertig 251 AC-DC and in this video I'll go over how to use the advanced AC features of the machine like independent waveforms as well as mix AC-DC. This is part of a video owner's manual series and in the previous videos I already went over how to set up the machine, how to use basic TIG welding features as well as advanced DC TIG welding features. So the information in this video will build on what we've already discussed in those previous videos. I'll head over to the interface on the machine to take a look at some of these settings. Now in the main settings menu, scroll down and make sure the user interface is on advanced so you'll have access to all of them. Here in the process selection, we can select AC and now there is a pulse option available as well. The pulse settings will be the same that we discussed in previous videos. If you go into the standard option, you'll see there are more than just the three waveforms we had before. There are combinations where you can have a different waveform on the positive and negative side of the cycle. Why would you want to use independent waveforms? Well, let's say that you're welding on something relatively thin, so you want to have the reduced heat input of a triangular wave on your electrode negative. That's where most of the heat input happens but you want to still have the full square wave on the electrode positive side to give you effective cleaning and etching of the material. So you might use those two together to share that capability. I'll just select square wave here to demonstrate the other features that we have. And once again, high frequency start. Similar to before, we have our amperage. You can press on the encoder wheel to adjust your frequency and press on it again to adjust your balance right here from the home screen. If we go into the main settings menu and AC wave, once again, you can still adjust these main parameters here like your AC balance and frequency. In addition to balance and frequency, now you can select electrode positive and reduce the amperage there by a percentage of your set welding current. So this is an asymmetric waveform or independent amperage control. Notice here with 100% electrode positive how wide that white etching band is next to the weld. One reason you might want to reduce your electrode positive is to reduce the size of that etching band and it will also help you to maintain a point on your tungsten electrode, but at a certain point it will not be as effective in cleaning and etching your weld. You can see that wide etching band with 100% electrode positive and when I reduce it, it tightens that up a little bit. Now you can also change the electrode negative if you'd rather reduce that here in the main settings menu by changing that parameter. But we'll leave ours on electrode positive for now. Now look at mixed mode AC-DC and this switches between AC and DC by running three AC cycles followed by a period of DC welding. And so the AC cycles will break up the oxide layer and do some cleaning like a regular AC arc would. And that DC portion allows the arc to really penetrate in. And so this gives you a lot more penetration on thick material for the amount of amperage that you're using. To enable mixed mode, just go into your process selection and select mix AC DC and standard. Once again, you can select your waveforms and start method. Let's go ahead and go into the main settings menu and now you see there is a mix wave option in addition to your AC wave. Your AC wave has the same settings. Mix wave is simply a percentage of time that you're on DC. Generally you can go up to about 40% with pure argon and significantly higher if you're running helium. I'll demonstrate this by running a bead on plate on this cold half inch thick aluminum bar. This would typically be difficult to do with a 250 amp machine and an air cooled torch. So this just gives another tool in the tool belt when you need to do those types of jobs. Next, we'll take a look at the zero crossing current, which is adjustable on this machine in the menu. So if you scroll down to zero crossing current, generally you can leave this on automatic, but if you're welding on thinner material or lower amperage situations, you can manually set this, which is the amperage that the machine is at when it actually switches between positive and negative. If it's too low of a value for your welding current, the arc may be unstable, but it does give you the ability to fine tune. If you look here at the slow motion of the weld puddle, you can see at 50 amps how much more stable the weld puddle is than it is at 80 amps zero crossing current. 
So if you really need to fine tune things, that's available too. You can see that between the DC features that we covered in the last video and the AC features that we covered in this one, this machine can do a lot. And while you don't need those for every single job, having them allows you to really tailor the output of the machine to the task at hand. And it just makes life easier for you and allows you to do things that you wouldn't always be able to do with just an ordinary machine. In the next video, I'll go over the stick welding features on the machine.